What's up everybody, Jesse back here, and today we finally have the review of the brand new Broly figure from the, you know, Dragon Ball Z, or Dragon Ball Super Broly movie. And uh, this guy is a beast, man, he's so massive, and I have some things to say about him. I'm not gonna get into it until I have the figure out, but yeah, uh, you know, I'm back for review after a long hiatus, but here we have the box. Typical, what we're accustomed to seeing. So nothing more to say there. Got some good shots. Got shots of the ear. I don't know why, but whatever. So let's get this guy out of the packaging and see what it comes with. So straight out the box, Broly comes with not a lot of stuff. Um, kind of disappointed. I feel like the other iterations of Broly, even though they were all just the same figures, just recolored, did come with a lot more stuff. And yeah, I feel like they kind of shafted us on accessories that he could have come with, especially seeing as how. He was such a powerhouse in the movie. Hopefully the other ones rectify that. I don't think they will. I think they kind of shined away from blast effects for like bigger figures. Which is bad, but whatever. So it comes with a total of three faces. One with this serious looking face right here. You can tell the scar is well done. I really like that. And it is sculpted on there, so it's pretty, pretty good. We have his yelling face. Again, very well done. It comes with three sets of hands. Got uh, the two fist hands that you see there, two open palm hands, and with two semi-open palm hands, I guess you could you could put like the old key blast on there or whatever, but you know, nothing too impressive when it comes down to that. And then we have, I have actually put the smirking face on him because I feel like that's the craziest. You know, that looks pretty badass. And I love the hair, man. I think they did a really good job with his redesign in total. So, this figure is actually one of my favorites. Like, across the board. Like, the shading on this guy, it's pretty hard to tell on camera, but in person, you could tell all the shading in the crevices and the flesh tone is really well done. And this is kind of what, you know, the figures have been missing for quite a while. The scar is really well done, and I think you can actually see like some kind of uh, yeah, you can see some kind of like muscular texture in there of like where the scar would have been, and then it healed over time. It's pretty fucking sick. Excuse the language, but yeah, it's pretty damn sick, and it's done really well. And just everywhere, so good that you even got a little bit of the shading there. The camera's picking that up with my light, but overall, when you have the figure in hand, it's very, very good. And I feel like that's pretty much just where the shading goes on the flesh tone. I feel like they could have done a little bit better shading on the green. On I feel like it's actually better on my camera than it is in person, which is weird. Doesn't you <laughs> things like that, that doesn't usually work that way. It's usually a lot better in person, but for some reason, like that green looks pretty badass on camera, but it's not really that bad in person but it could use a little bit more uh more shading detail on there and even so on the inside considering that this is supposed to be that uh spoiler alert but it's supposed to be that large animal's ear this definitely could have used a little bit more texture and shading especially because i, I feel like it should have been decomposing by now right but you know whatever overall Good color scheme on this Broly, I'm, I dig it. Everything looks fine. The hair is probably one of my favorite pieces. And of course, the hair with this face, it just looks so badass. <clears throat> Let's get into some articulation. So first off, Broly's head can move around decently. You know, his hair will get in uh, of his massive traps right there. So you can still force it over but then you'll start getting some gapage right there and of course the faceplate will fall off so he can't turn his head a full 360 can't even move it up all the way so he can't really be oh, he can't really be doing much looking up looking down perfect his chin rests right down top of his pecs so it's pretty cool in terms of the shoulders pretty easy to move them nothing crazy I do like them uh, this one's kind of loose, but not too much, not not noticeable. And can does have that butterfly joint as you can see right here. 
does allow for some decent movement so you can, you know, yoke someone up when you have the open hands. Just, but yeah. Which is not, not too bad. You got the bicep swivel right there. Elbow joint. You got some forearm. Nothing in the forearm, but you got some wrist movements. As we're accustomed to with all, you know, SH figures. Releases. It's kind of weird trying to get these shoulders back into place once you, you know, move them out. It does have some decent diaphragm joint right there. It's not going to crunch forward too much. That's about it. Uh, backwards, a little bit more so. A little bit more so. Uh, it does have some waist articulation there. As we're all girls accustomed to with. SH figures, they've been doing really good. This is pretty cool. This right here is super soft, which is... Oh, I can't say this enough. This is materials they should have been using a long time ago. If they weren't going to go for mixed media stuff, which is actual, like, cloth materials. Then it should be all loose plastic, man. Like, I I look back the line, I see some horrible choices. And it just angers me. The back is not on a hinge, though. That's where this kind of, you know, messes up on my... On for me, it's not a hinge, it is just plugged into his back. So, yeah, well, I mean, it is on a hinge, but it's not on a you know, actual hinge that you can see, which is good because they it does hide it fairly well. But then you have some issues there, All right? I would prefer there to just be hinged all around, like hidden, like this one is all over here. I think it would have been cool. You're gonna get some more dynamic movement from. The actual um, ear piece or skirt piece, whatever you want to call this, right? From the actual fur. So, yeah. Kudos to them for doing that. I, you know, it looks it looks awesome. It hides the joint perfectly. However, I think if you're going to do it there, you could have easily done it everywhere else. Seamlessly like that. And it would have been really badass. But it's just a minor nitpick. And I feel like some people might actually try to force that. And you might end up tearing the little bit of rubber disc right there. But it's not. It's nothing serious, guys. Nothing serious. So let's move on to his feet. Well, his legs he does have, you know, pretty much what everyone who would have the skirt piece here. This isn't really sculpted pants like that. Even though it's supposed to be tight. So get away with that. His legs can move up that far all the way. It's not bad movement at all. Move out to the side. Pretty damn smooth and good. Switch out all the way to the sides on both angles. So you can do the splits perfectly well. No interference from there. You see, this all looks pretty damn good and seamless when you're posing him on. So if you want, you can pose him on some things. This obviously does swivel right here. You can see. Oops. So you have that swivel action right there, knees then really far, and my favorite thing about this is that skirt piece does not hinder any movement as you can see. I've been posing this guy on camera and not once did any of this get stuck or nothing, so it's really, really done well. I'm, I'm super happy that they've, you know, finally nailed it, right? And we have some ankle articulation there to his big feet, and it's... Moves up, down, I got the toy, toy, I got the toe joint right there. And it does have some pretty epic ankle movements. Mine is a little tight, but it does have a really good swivel. And you can move this joint around. But yeah, so this one is a little bit tighter than this one, I believe it was. But there is a an ankle pivot swivel there. Uh, you don't want to force it too much, you know, especially when you hear that. That noise that mine was making, that little squeaking, that means that the, the plastic is rubbing up against each other and you, really, you don't really want that. So overall, my thoughts on this guy, uh, it's a great figure overall. You know, he's done very, very well. Hold on one second. You know, he has done very well. Uh, sculpt work is phenomenal, as always with, you know, Tamashii Nations. Uh, I f still feel like he's kind of a bit bulkier than he should be. Um, I feel like in the movie they didn't he wasn't as massive as the other Broly, you know, the previous Broly incarnations. 
and I kind of feel it weird that we would have gotten this Broly figure first before the other one. Seeing as how he's only really in this form, his full muscular form, you know, armor off and all that for about like maybe a, like what minute, two minutes, and it's all because he's getting his ass beat by Gogeta. I feel like the, but I feel like because we know Broly to be you know, this big, bulky, shirtless behemoth or a monster. That's kind of what they wanted to show us and deliver to us first. But I think if we were just shown the movie first and then they showed off the figures, like the line, the figure line down the road, people probably would have been clamoring more for the armored version or even a base version more than, than this one. Because he wasn't really this, this Broly, you know? This is like the past Broly mixing with the new incarnation and the new design choice, but... Overall, he's a really great figure, smooth articulation. Um, yeah, he's just pretty big. He's just a little bit too bulky for my taste. Um, even though I really do love the design of of Broly, I would have much preferred a base Broly or the you know his uh, full powered version. But nothing in in this, not the big you know the massive Super Saiyan Broly that they have here. Right there's a Super Saiyan Broly. Although it's really not, but whatever, you know, they, they make up the names, they decide. So yeah, also one thing I really love about this figure is the hair. Let me take off. Just give me one second, guys. The hair has just such volume to it. And it's something that we haven't seen in a long time, right? Like just something new, something different. And the way they did everything, it just looks so sick. Like, if they would have put, like, all the effort that they're putting into these figures now, they would have done it from the beginning of the line. I know that so many people wouldn't have left the line. So many people wouldn't have sold their old collections. You know, like me. So many people wouldn't have just dropped the line altogether because they kept re-releasing the same people. Re-releasing the same design over and over and over again. So, yeah, like, I'm glad that they're finally doing things properly, sort of. But, yeah. So, this is my review of the brand new Broly figure. It's a definite buy. Um, I think if you have the other Broly's, you kind of don't really need this one. But, you know, it's up to you. Uh, Broly is canon now. This is his canon look. So, if you want that, go ahead. It's fine. It's perfect. I can never say anything bad about a Broly figure. You know? So, um, yeah. Gogeta, I'm, be I'm actually about to get... Uh, Gogeta out of the box right now and review him, so see you later.